Hey, indie filmmakers, you're watching Indie Mogul. You're watching Cheap Thing versus Expensive Thing. The show where filmmaking gear is put to the financial test. Today, the battle between two $50 USB microphones. Can either one possibly compete against an $1,100 studio mic? I'm your filmmaker host, Griffin Hammond, and today I am inside the YouTube Space New York in one of their recording booths to test out these microphones. I'm doing this because I get a ton of emails, at least one every day, from usually a Chinese company making cheap filmmaking gear, and they want to know if I can try out the gear. Normally, I ignore most of these emails, but I got an email from a company called Fifine. They make this K670 microphone. It's only $50, and they sent it to me for free to try it out. And I thought, this is perfect for a cheap thing versus expensive thing episode. So I also got a $1,100 microphone, the Neumann TLM 103. And just to round out today's competition, I've also brought in the microphone that I record my podcast with, the Blue Baby Bottle, which is a $400 mic. And just to have another $50 mic in the competition, the very popular Blue Snowball Ice. To figure out which mic is the best value, I'll subject them to three tests, studio voiceover, music, and real-world DIY recording. Before I even get to the studio voiceover test, I realize we're hearing this obnoxious interference on the Fifine. It's not our phones. It's not crossed cables. Let's unplug the mic and take your laptop to the outside the room and see if it's the room. Even when I plug directly into the mic's headphone jack, I'm still hearing the interference. I'm hearing it right out of the mic. It must be wireless signals in the studio, but none of the other mics are having this problem. So for a simple voiceover test, we've just mounted all the microphones to be pretty much as tightly close together as we can to give them all a fair shot. I have a pop filter here to help, and I'm gonna put my mouth about two fists away from all the microphones. You can also some voiceover people will say, do this. That's an appropriate distance for speaking into a voiceover mic. Hey, indie filmmakers, Griffin here. This is my normal podcast voice for my podcast, Hey, Indie Filmmakers. And I'm speaking right down the middle of all four of these microphones. Two of them are XLR mics. The Neumann TLM-103 and the Blue Baby Bottle are both plugged in via XLR into my Zoom H5, which is acting like a USB audio interface device plugged in to the laptop. The other two are USB mics. The blue Snowball Ice and the Fifine are just plugged right into the computer. I'm using Audio Hijack. That was my, my loud podcast voice. Let me do like a whispery voice now. Hey, indie filmmakers. This is midnight with hey, indie filmmakers. I don't know. <laughs> You're watching Indie Mogul. This is the sultry, whispery voice. So I'm also just curious about the microphone on my iPhone. So here, let's start a voice memo. And we'll just throw this in as a fifth microphone. <laughs> hey, indie filmmakers, Griffin here. This is a test that now includes an iPhone XS Max. What do you think? <laughs> I do love the, the shape of the Fifine. It's interesting. I kind of picked the, the Neumann TLM 103 because they're similar a similar look to these two studio mics. The one weird thing I think about the Fifine is that it has an, a blue LED inside, which I guess is cool, it lets you know that it's on, but I just think it ruins the aesthetic of it. If you didn't have the light on, it looks like a fancier microphone. Before I finish the voiceover test, one thing I wanna do is I have a theory that even if the Neumann sounds way better than the $50 Fifine, my theory is that proper mic placement is more important than the expense of the mic. So if I push the Neumann, oops, yeah, <laughs> let's push the Neumann way over here. Okay, yeah, now you can see the Neumann is way back by the camera, the Fifine is right up here close to my mouth. I have a feeling that this one sounds better than the Neumann. And this is why you don't put a microphone on the camera if you can avoid it. 
you want to bring it as close as you can to your subject. Now for test number two. In addition to my deep voice, I want to hear if my friend Peter's guitar, with its wider set of frequencies, yields different results. The dynamic range of a guitar, you know, from to is a lot wider than the, the voice, the human voice. So, you know, the Neumann is like Led Zeppelin, classic bands use Neumanns. I think they're all capturing the same thing. I'm really curious to see how these all cover this sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, let's see. sounds pretty good and your guitar is loud enough that it's kind of drowning out the, yeah. the noise problem it's still there maybe something a little more dynamic maybe like The snowball doesn't sound as rich. I'd have to look at it, the frequency, but I'm guessing it's not the same frequency response as those other mics. Before the final test, I got my hands on a second Fifine unit to see if this one also exhibits the interference noise. Here's a real world test for you. We are inside my tiny New York City bedroom closet where I've crammed all four microphones. This is what I normally do to record voiceover. And we have a new unit of the K670, the Fifine here, although I am still hearing some of that interference noise. It's not as bad as on the first unit we had, but I think it's still there. So what do you think? Here's why proper mic placement is so important. Last week I made this mistake where instead of putting my microphone all the way into the closet surrounded by clothes, I thought I was being pretty ingenious hanging it here from the door. Only problem is, now my voice is bouncing off the door and hitting the mic a second time, creating this kind of tinny reverb effect. If you go back and listen to last week's episode of Cheap Thing vs. Expensive Thing, you'll hear what I'm talking about, and I don't like the result. Today I'm testing out both kinds, 23 different filters, to find out how much difference a piece of glass can make. In this contest between microphones at different price points, I have to say maybe the most important thing is the environment. We're shooting in a really nice recording booth in the YouTube space, and everything sounds pretty good in a space like this. So even a good mic used badly will not sound as good as a bad mic used correctly. So you could probably get away with any of these mics. Maybe I need to disqualify the Five Fine Case 670. But among our final three contenders, you can certainly hear the difference. Yet your audience never gets this opportunity to hear a side-by-side -side comparison of what your audio could have been. I think even the $50 microphone can get the job done. And although I really like how the $1,100 Neumann sounds, I just can't justify upgrading from my current microphone. Thank you for watching Cheap Thing vs. Expensive Thing, and thank you to everyone who has commented that they wanted to see a Studio Mic episode. Let me know in the comments what other kinds of reviews you'd like to see in the future. <laughs>